We're going to bring in Susan Constantine now. She's a jury consultant. She's also a leading body language expert in human behavior. So, Susan, we just saw that. What did you make of his reaction or perhaps the lack thereof? Well, there was reaction there, but it was concealed. So he's trying to hold back his emotions. But if you've noticed that his skin was more blotchy and there was more white that you see that is in his face than we've seen before, that's that fear, right, that he's overwhelmed. But you also see him just slightly just kind of rocking. And at the same time, his eyes are blinking more rapidly. So every time it came to that he was guilty, watch the eye flutter. And that is that cognitive load, the reality of what's happening. But I think he expected it. His whole face demeanor was just melting off. So he knew before he walked in there, especially since there was a verdict in three hours, he knew that what that outcome was going to be because he's an attorney himself. Not good for Alex Murdoch yesterday. So the feed that I was watching of this guilty verdict also had a split screen with Buster. And Buster also didn't show very much emotion until uh, I think the fourth verdict was read. It looked like he did shed some tears and he put his head down. But what did you make of the reaction of Buster to go along with that of his father? Yeah, so Buster is, you know, when we look at his facial expressions and throughout, he tends to mask a lot. So he's very much of an internal processor. The fact that he's leaning to the side, he's kind of melting into the group, he's not sitting straight up, he's just kind of off to the side like this. He's not feeling very confident, but you could see the sadness in his mouth, but it's ever so slight. He has learned over time to mask to conceal his emotions. Yes, the lack of tears, but I also think that he expected the same outcome. So that is your body language expertise. Uh, we, I wanna ask you about the jury too though. Less than four hours after 28 days in court, including the jury selection, uh, just as a frame of reference, these cases have nothing to do with each other, but the OJ trial lasted 11 months. They too took about four hours to deliberate. So, so much goes into this trial and then it's less than three hours. What do you make of that? Or less, yeah, less than three hours. What do you make of that? Well, I have to tell you something really interesting about this. He was convicted in three hours and one minute. The number one line number is three. People use the number three. Isn't that interesting and ironic that he was convicted in three hours? But outside of that, I think that what happened was is that once that jury went into the room, they had already made up their mind, right? They took that first vote, everybody said guilty, and now here's the outcome. Comparing it to O.J. Simpson, O.J. Simpson was a celebrity. I think he had a high level of likability. People didn't want to believe that he was guilty. So he had a lot of followers and he had a lot of charisma. I think that what happened with Alex is the minute he set he stood up on the stand, okay, and testified on his own behalf. Once he was there and he allowed himself to be seen, his lies just started to, to be seen over and over again. I think he was convicted on his demeanor evidence and again, that they couldn't believe him and that all of the things that he said in the past, he had zero credibility. So he could have cried a river, no one believed it. And I think that that's the reason why there was this outcome. Uh, Susan Constantine, thank you for uh, breaking that down for us. It's interesting. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.